So it appears that the FTX fiasco goes so much deeper than any of us thought. In fact, it goes all the way to Washington, D.C. Let me just catch everyone up who's like, oh, what the hell is an FTX? What happened? So this guy here, Sam Bankman Freed, founded a crypto exchange called FTX. It was the second biggest exchange behind Binance. Everyone was washing this guy's balls, saying how great he was, but it turns out that SBF was not keeping people's funds safe. -oo. This guy was not the crypto version of Warren Buffett like so many people told us he was. He was more like the crypto version of Bernie Madoff because he was putting people's funds wherever the hell he wanted to, mostly into Alameda Research. And it turns out that there was more than just cryptocurrencies that he was putting into Alameda Research. Uh, so this woman here, Caroline Ellison, was Alameda Research's former CEO, and she was also SBF's former girlfriend. So yeah, these two companies were quite literally in bed with one another. Now, despite these two being separate companies, the majority of Alameda's $14.6 billion in holdings was FTX, primarily the FTT token that FTX had issued, which they were able to just create more supply of whenever they wanted to. Now, all of this intercompany mingling is one thing, but the real problem is that FTX didn't have enough liquid assets to pay their customers when they wanted to withdraw and the price of their FTT token was being artificially inflated because you had this other company, Alameda Research, that was just holding on to billions of dollars worth of it. And so if you're putting Bitcoin, Ethereum, or even fiat currency into FTX to trade with, there was no guarantee that those currencies would still be within FTX, which is the exact opposite of what SBF told us was going on on November the 7th. He tweeted this literally as things were going down. He said that FTX had enough to cover all client holdings, as in whatever you put in, we can pay it back out, at least in fiat. And he has since deleted those tweets. Uh, so we're looking very, very suspicious here. And because these companies were again, primarily invested in the FTT token, their values plummeted overnight because the only thing that was really giving the FTT token any value was FTX's reputation, the fact that SBF was being seen as this Warren Buffett genius investor guy, and the fact that FTX was the second biggest exchange. Uh, so obviously, that reputation is in the toilet now, along with the value of the FTT token. Now, let's take a look at the political implications of FTX and Sam Bankman-Fried. So these are the biggest donors to political parties and candidates uh, for 2021 to 2022 in America. So, of course, the biggest donation by far, $128 million, is made by George Soros, coming from the Soros Fund, and that's all going to Democrats. So not really any surprises there. Uh, then we go through the rest of these and we see a bunch of different uh, Republican donations, large Republican donations. This guy's kind of playing the spread a little bit. But then the second biggest blue donation is coming from Sam Bankman Freed and uh, from FTX US. And he is playing the spread a little bit too. He's uh, donating 235,200 to Republicans, but obviously there's the big number, $36,793,956 to Democrats. Then I dug a little bit deeper into the Freeds and I found this, Mind the Gap, which is a left-wing super PAC that's dedicated to helping Democratic political candidates win elections. Now, one of the things that you need to understand about super PACs is that they allow people, usually very wealthy people, to fund different candidates, in this case, Democratic candidates, anonymously. And in this case, the primary donors uh, that are giving to Mind the Gap are Silicon Valley executives, so pretty wealthy people. And under their leadership, we see we have Barbara Freed, 
And we see that she is the founder and president of Mind the Gap before creating the organization. Frieda was a professor at Stanford Law School. Barbara is also the mother of crypto billionaire Sam Bankman Freed. Seems kind of weird that the leader of a super PAC, her only two accomplishments, at least that are mentioned here, would be a professor at Stanford and then being the mother of a crypto billionaire. Seems a little suspicious. So not only was this SBF guy running a crypto Ponzi scheme, stealing billions of dollars from people, but he's using those proceeds, your money, to play house of cards and choose who your senator is, who your congressperson is. And mind you, he doesn't even live in America. I mean, he was American born, but he lives in the fucking Bahamas, having orgies in a big house with FTX and Alameda research employees. And I'm only halfway joking about those company orgies in the Bahamas, by the way, because the in-house therapist at FTX was very familiar with the sex lives of those employees and was trying to find them dating options because for some reason, these rich nerds can't figure out how to find a date outside the company in the Bahamas. And some of the staff who were paired up dating, they were dating other people within the company. Of course, we had SPF dating Caroline, which, by the way, this this gal, <laughs> at least based on what's on her Tumblr blog, was into some pretty freaky stuff. But this business was a complete mess. And mind you, this business wasn't a small regional bank. They're managing billions of dollars in assets. Their CEO was the second biggest Democrat donor. And that's the part that really makes me think that they're going to have to not just put SBF in jail, but they're going to have to bury him under the jail. Because the only con artist that I can think of that compares to saying Bankman Freed, I know it's kind of getting old at this point, but it's Bernie Madoff, who scammed people out of $65 billion in the largest Ponzi scheme in history. Bernie Madoff was chairman of the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. Everyone also thought that he was a genius, just like SBF. But when the feds busted him, they gave Bernie Madoff 150 years, and he died in prison as an old man. So far, it's estimated that SBF has lost $1 billion in customers' funds. Then there's another half a billion that was stolen in quotes, last weekend, which a lot of people think is an inside job given the timing of that alleged hack. So yeah, given the fact that this guy stole from rich people as well, not just middle-class people, you know, as rich people, just like Bernie Madoff, tells me that something is gonna be done about it. You can't just mess with rich people's money and think that nobody is gonna care. And of course, him donating money to political candidates, that makes him look really bad too because People are going to say that they received stolen financial funds. I know a lot of the candidates, both Democrats and Republicans, they're giving away that money now. They're trying to give it up to charities because, you know, they don't want to be looked at as receiving those stolen funds. And I also think it brings into question the mind, uh, the mind, the gap super PAC, since SBF's mom was the founder of that. And it's it's really fishy how you end up becoming the head of something like that. I mean, I guess there aren't necessarily any real requirements to become the head of a super PAC, but you would think that you need to have a whole lot of money. And again, one of her second biggest accomplishments that's mentioned there is her son being a billionaire. So it, it seems really sus. It seems like some of SBF's money might have also flowed through that super PAC. I think at the very least it's worth an investigation. And if this guy isn't investigated and given a long jail sentence, it's going to be very bad optics and pretty much look like corruption on the Democrats end because of course that's the current administration. And unfortunately, there's also going to be more political pressure to further regulate cryptocurrencies in general because as we saw, the entire crypto market took a big dip. People's trust in cryptocurrencies has been severely impacted like this. And unfortunately, even though, in my opinion, this kind of stuff completely goes against the spirit of cryptocurrency, but people look to daddy government for regulations to save and protect them. Even though all of this in reality has nothing to do with cryptocurrency and everything to do with people putting trust in someone who shouldn't have been trusted. As the phrase goes, not your keys, not your coins. 
it's really not complicated rocket science to store private keys and to store your crypto privately. I know we all get reminded from time to time about that guy who threw out a hard drive that had 7,500 Bitcoins on it, which is now worth like $100 million. So I think that most people understand at this point that any amount of cryptocurrency could be worth a lot someday. So those private keys or seed phrases, they're gonna be the most valuable pieces of data that you'll likely ever store. Now, how should you store it? Well, in my opinion, it depends on how much your crypto is worth or how much you think it's gonna be worth. Anything up to $50,000, I say would be safe within your custody. So store it within a wallet of your choice. Uh, generally, I recommend going with open source wallets. And personally, I like multi-asset wallets like Trust Wallet uh, and Exodus, which Exodus isn't fully open source, but I still use it. I think it's only their UI, which is closed source. Uh, but anyway, I, I like those types of wallets because then you're able to manage multiple types of cryptocurrencies at once. Now, one thing to point out is with software wallets, of course it's software, so it runs on the computer. And if you're the kind of person who isn't good at keeping the computer secure, or if you share your computer with others, then you should use a cold storage wallet, cold storage meaning that it's not connected to the internet, so it's more secure. Now, if you're going to be storing more than $50,000 worth of cryptocurrency, I recommend only cold storage for one, uh, don't put that much on a computer ever unless, or, or an exchange, unless you're going to be like selling it or you're gonna be exchanging it for another currency, cryptocurrency. Uh, but with that kind of money, it might be a good idea to put a trusted third party in custody of your crypto, such as your lawyer, or maybe in a bank safety deposit box. Because the thing with cryptocurrencies is most of them have fully public blockchains, meaning anyone who has sent you crypto in the past or knows your crypto address some other way, they can easily look up and see that you have $50,000 in Bitcoin. And that amount could potentially make you the of armed robbery or a home invasion. Of course, that's assuming that you don't already have a bunch of armed security guards. Because I mean, look, if you got 50K in Bitcoin, I, I, I would expect you to have some kind of security or to have at least started investing in your own self-defense, which honestly, that's something everyone should do regardless of how much money you have. Uh, so for you badasses out there, I guess by all means, carry around a million dollars worth of Bitcoin on your Trezor hardware wallet right next to the big iron on your hip. But the point is, Trust in crypto, not in the bank man. And for the chads that are already holding, remember, try as the government might, they can't legislate math.